Amen. Amen. We praise his holy name tonight for allowing us once again to be here, to worship, to praise him, to have a good time in his presence. Um, we want to thank the musicians for the job well done. Amen. I, I still believe that the music ministry can do much more. Um, if only musicians will always stick together. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> no, because, you know, it's interesting that you, you find a powerful group, people singing together, and two months down the line, they've broken up. Uh, but what happened? You know, this one said this to this, and they are gone. <laughs> like there's no Jesus who can reconcile them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right, tonight, um, let's take our Bibles, and again, let's turn to the book of Luke. Yesterday we read from the book of Luke, isn't it? Yeah. Let's go to the book of Luke. And when you get to the book of Luke, let me hear you say amen. amen. <laughs> All right. Uh, I believe we are in church. No one is lying. Are we in the book of Luke? Amen. All right. All right. Now today we are going to look at chapter 4. When you get to chapter 4, let me hear you say amen. Amen. All right. Okay. Before we read, let's bow our heads in prayer. Father in heaven, tonight we just want to praise you. We thank you for this beautiful music. And yet the Bible tells us ears have not heard. Therefore, what we have heard here is much, much, much less than what we are going to hear. But we want to praise you, Heavenly Father, because what we have heard touches our souls. And it brings us closer to you. As we read your word now, Heavenly Father, we pray, talk to us according to your will. There's a soul right now, right here, who needs to hear these words. Allow us, Heavenly Father, to say them as you want them to be said. And when we are done with what you want us to say, teach us to be quiet so that your spirit can work within the hearts of your people. In the name of our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. We are looking at chapter 4. Let's start from verse 16. Is verse 16 there in your Bible? If it's there, let me hear you say amen. amen. All right. May you read Elder verse 16. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Thank you very much. This is very interesting that Jesus... Is coming back home. You know, going back home is a problem. Going back home is a problem. Because you see, wherever you are, you can be a hero, but not at home. <laughs> Out there, you'll be this mighty man, this powerful preacher, this whoever. But when you come back home, it's a different ball game. So Jesus is going back to the people who know his childhood. You see the problem with home is they have a tendency of keeping all the negatives about you. They specialize in that. So when they arrive home, they identify you about, uh, by things that you did many years ago. So as you walk in, they will tip each other's soldier, shoulder and say, you see that guy, that's the one that I was telling you about. And who is he? So, so don't you remember the story? home. They identify you with uh, some events that happened. This is the guy who was dating so and so on, and they defied you. Remember at some party? <laughs> he was going back home. Do you know that Christianity, the most difficult place to practice Christianity is at home? Because they know you. You can pretend out here, but not there. Now, Jesus is coming back home to people that were familiar. And some people, for some unknown reasons, they don't believe God can use familiar, can't use familiar people. If somebody from this church becomes a specialist in whatever, they would rather invite somebody from somewhere mm -hmm. and not this one. Mm -hmm. People at home. Jesus was going home where he grew up. And when he gets there, they had heard about what he was doing. 
They wanted him to come home. You know when you start doing things, people at home would want you to come home. But they don't want to accept you. The people at home, when you go up the ladder, they pull you down. Because they remember what you did. Jesus is going back home. Now let's see what happens. Give us verse 17. And as he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Thank you very much. When he gets home, he decides to go to church. Hallelujah. Amen. I love that part. And when he came into church, the children that grew up with him, who are now elders, allowed him to speak. Why? Because they've heard the powerful miracles that he had done. In the people who had resurrected, feeding 5,000. Now he has come home. Let's see what he's going to do. And the book says, they gave him the book. Hallelujah. They gave him the book. In Israel, when they, they give you the book, they are giving you authority. In fact, I, I, I don't like the book, you know. I don't know whether some of you are like me. As you drive along the roads, I, I thank the Lord for cameras. Before cameras came, there used to be police officers who stand by the roadside. You remember? And they put their speed trip. And as you pass, further down, they stop you. Now, as long as he's talking to you one-on-one, -on -one, there's no problem. But when you see him pulling up the book, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The book shows now I have authority. When I was a small child, my mother was not learned. For some unknown reasons, on a Friday of all days, Friday, you know those days we used to have some small bookcases, you remember them? Some like small suitcases? And when I get home, I tell myself it's a Friday, no homework. And I throw my handbag, away, my, 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 my school case away. My mom says, son, let me see your books. Ow. <laughs> my mother, you can't read. What, what do you want to see? <laughs> Somehow, I did not want her to look at my book. When God got into this place, they gave him the book. Mm. And back home, I'm, I'm, I'm Zimbabwean, and I praise the Lord for that. Hallelujah. Yeah. There are very few of you who understand what happens in my beloved country. Now, when, 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 back home, when you are arrested, they take you to the police station. As long as they are talking to you, all is well. But when they ask you to take off your shoes and they pull out the book, then you know things have started. You may not see the sun for the coming three months or so. The book will make a difference. And the Bible says they gave him the book, which means he was given authority. But let me tell you something. They did not know what they were doing because he was the book himself. Not only that, all they knew was written by him because the Bible teaches me that all scripture oh, yes. hallelujah Amen. so when they gave the book they are giving the book to the book because when you open the book you find words and Jesus is the word remember yes. therefore they give the word to the word yes. hallelujah Amen. and when you read about the word it does not die as I 48 tells me all these things will pass, but the word of the Lord yes. will live forever. Amen. Therefore, they are giving a word that dies, a word that dies to the word that, 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 that does not die. In other words, Jesus was the living word. And the Bible was the dead word. They gave him the book. And some people don't understand that this, Jesus was, you, you, you see, some years ago, I wrote a paper on Pathfinder. I thank the Lord that in this church, I, there are no, there's not one who was my Pathfinder. They don't like me that much. But uh, it was then, I praise the Lord, that is now. I wrote a paper preparing for a Pathfinder fair. It was sent all over the country, and I was going round 
I get to a place, there's a director who is busy arguing with me. <coughs> no, it's not like that. No, it's not. Until I asked him, who wrote that paper? <laughs> it was Pastor A. Shekerwa. And then I said, it's me. <laughs> I'm the owner of that book. So when Jesus comes and you give him the book, you are giving him what he knows. Yeah. It's not strange to him. Remember Moses the other time says, take my name off the book that you have written. Way before Jesus came to earth, there were books already in place. Remember Daniel also says, I behold and thrones were taken and the books were opened. Yeah. And Malachi says, those that feared the Lord spoke one to another. Yes. And the books, the Lord hearkened and heard and books were opened. So when Jesus is given the book, he knows what is going to happen. And then the Bible tells me the book of Isaiah. This is where we meet a virgin mother. I, a lot of people don't understand that. I don't want to get excited tonight. But I want you to know what it means is when Mary had given birth to Jesus, she was a virgin. You don't understand it. But that's what the book says. This, Jesus is the only word that we understand and we know he is the only person who was both older and younger than his mother. When he's given the book of Isaiah, this is where we see the new earth. This is where there's a round table where Jesus, God says, come and let us reason together. This is where you meet God saying, when they pray, I hear and I answer. This is where he says, fear thou not, for I am with you. Be not be dismayed because I'm your God. In this book we meet it all. Hallelujah. And then, what is interesting, he opened the book. Did you, did you see that? He did what? This is where the gist of the matter is. We have too many people who have books that they don't open. That's why you go to some church and you are told to bring all your money to the pastor and you do that. Your problem, you did not open the book. Learn to open the book. That's why when you are sick, you run all over and moving at night because you don't know what the book says. Learn to open the book. Amen. There are people who have powerful Bibles with commentaries, but they don't know nothing. Yeah. Because they're not opening the book. And there are some people who love carrying powerful books, but they don't open them. <laughs> Jesus opened the book. Now understand this. He was the word, the living word. Remember? And the Bible tells me he was there in the beginning with God. But when they gave him the book, he opened the book. He could have said to them, don't worry. Now we have preachers who claim to know it all. If the master opened the book, who are you? We have people today who would want to tell you that I know it all. And when you listen to the way they quote, it's all something else out of this world. You wonder. Learn to open the book. Because all that you want is within the book. It's not on the covers. <laughs> See, some of you are not aware that I'm learned. I went to Solusi College some <laughs> years ago. I mean, I mean, it's a privilege to go to Solusi. <laughs> uh, a lot of people never went there. But I got there. And, then, and uh, then the principal of the college says, in this institution, we don't care whether your book is covered or not. What we want is what is in the book. Mm. Because those days, there were these young women who would cover and put nice pictures. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And when you look at it, you say, wow, this one, I think she's very brilliant. So when you get into class that you discover, oh, oh, it's just the book. <laughs> So what is important is open the book. I'm looking for a church where people open the book. And when they talk, they talk standing on the book. 
when they pray, they pray according to the book. What if we go do it God's way? God's way is the book way. Don't tell us your theory. Tell us what is written. For when Jesus was in the wilderness, the devil tries him and he says it's, it's, it's written. Where is it written? In the book. So those who want too much to glory, those who want to go home to our Father, start with opening the book. Because the book is the one that will give you direction of where you are going. It will tell you where you are. With all the signs of the times, someone is still a sleeping giant. Why? Because they have not opened the book. Come on, learn to open the book. And argue from the book. Doesn't matter what they say, you say it, but I stand by the book. Now when you look at Revelation the other time, John is in a vision and somebody, nobody is found to open the book. You remember, John cried. Because he knew the book must be opened. If the book is not opened, we're in trouble. Now listen, church, unless the church opens the book, we are in trouble. Because we failed to open the book, we are now in a serious problem. Now we don't know which direction we are going. And all theories, anyone will say anything. The Bible says, he opened the book. Now I want us to understand that Jesus just did not end up opening the book that time. He went beyond. Because remember, even when we go through the pearly gates, it's only those names that are written in the book that will open before the throne of grace. So even where we are going, you'll find an open book. But then the Bible says, he found the place. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's where we are going to end. Don't worry, we won't go very far. He found the place. Now, say to the person next to you, he found the place. place. Say it again, he found the place. Now, now, now listen. (laughs) When when, when you get to open the book, you will find a home in the book. Uh, You did not pick it. Now, Now come to church. When you open the book, you find a place in the book. I learned this from my mom. She could not read much, but she used to read the Bible. And when my father passed away, she found a place in the book. When things get tough, I would see her open where it says to the widow, your creator is your husband. She found a place in the book. Do you have a place in the book? I remember one time we were going to pray for the sick. And we had an old woman, she would always walk with her hands, carrying her hands behind. And when we arrived, she says, according to the book, Jeremiah 32, 27, God, you say you are the creator of all flesh. Is there anything too difficult for you? You are my God. I'm asking for healing. And she walked away. She found a place in the book. Somebody says, I lose my sleep night after night. I even fear to go to bed. But I found a place where the Lord says, fear thou not, for I am with you. Do you have a place in the book? Too many of us just rush through the Bible. Find a place where you can stand and say, when it comes to this, I will stand here. Do you know why a lot of our prayers are not answered? We pray empty prayers. You want to practice your English before the throne of grace. (laughs) And I will say, learn to have your prayer standing on the word of God. Lord, according to your promise, I won't move. Because this is what the book says. And when you know what the book says and you have found a place, make a home in that place. I want to challenge the church tonight. Find your place in the book. When you drive home tonight, ask your wife, ask your husband, do you have a place? Why don't we share what is your place in the book? Ask your children, do you have a place? Because a lot of us have been in the church, but we have no place in the book. 
We have no power. There is power in the opened page where God speaks and when he speaks, things happen. I love <laughs> to look at what happens when the book is open. Somebody comes to me and he says, I have so many enemies around me. And I say, do you find a place in the book? No, pastor. But remember, there's a place in the book which says, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. So enemies can come. I'm safe in my place. I won't move. Somebody says, no, but the enemies are too much. I have a place in the book where the Lord says, he prepares a table in the presence of my enemies. Doesn't matter how many they are. I have my place in the book. I love that. You, you, you see, when you, when you look at that psalm, it's like the scenario is, he gets there, bored, and his child, and there are no enemies, and they stand around, waiting for enemies to come. You know, you know, God does not promote you until they are enemies. Praise the Lord for enemies. Yeah. So when they come and surround you, they go into the boardroom, they want to discuss some other people. No one knows you because remember, you are there because you went to school. Some people are there because they have uncles and aunts who work in the company. So when it comes to promotion, they promote them and you do the work. You know what I'm talking about? But as they are inside the boardroom, because you have a God who prepares a table before you in the presence of them, he starts calling your name. And they get out of there confused. How could we vote for such and such? What happened? They don't know. I have a place in the book. Hallelujah. He found a place in the book. The other time, Jesus gets to a funeral and people are crying powerfully. <laughs> That's what the Bible says, you know. And Jesus asks them, why are you crying? Why are you making so much noise? And I found a place in the book. Because now I know when I lose my relative, my loved one in death, this is not the end. I know one day the trumpet shall sound. Yeah. Hallelujah. He found a place in the book. And I want to say to you tonight, go home, look for a place in the book. Let's stand and pray.